Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. This time we're going to be looking at a novel by Paul Anderson called Brainwave and it was first serialized in Space Science Fiction magazine in 1953 and then published as a novel in 1954. This novel asks the question what would happen if all thinking creatures on earth had their intelligence increased fivefold. Well, let's get right into it. Our story begins just as night falls when a rabbit gets caught in a trap. After examining the trap carefully, it figures out how to lift the gate and escape. We next shift to Archie Brock who has been pulling out stumps out of the field all day and is now walking the three miles home at night. And he gets afraid because he is suddenly thinking thoughts that he's never thought before so he runs home. We now shift to an unnamed 10 year old boy who since it's summer has gotten up and is planning to go fishing with his friends but before he goes he wants to work on his model airplane but as he picks it up it no longer interests him so he begins doing his next favorite thing which is doodling with numbers and as he begins to work with the numbers he comes up on his own with differential calculus. We now meet Pete Corinth and his wife Sheila who are having breakfast and Pete is a physicist and he's excited because he woke up with a solution to a problem that has been baffling him for some time and he is so excited that he doesn't realize that his wife Sheila is paying attention to his work which she never did before and he leaves to go to work and Sheila is puzzled because she's having thoughts that had never occurred to her before. As he's going down in the elevator, Pete meets his friend and neighbor, Felix Mandelbaum. And as he mentions to him that he got a new idea for solution to his problem, Mandelbaum also tells him that he woke up with an idea of how to reorganize his union. As Pete is going up in the elevator at the Rossman Institute where he works, the elevator operator tells him that he woke up this morning wondering why he was doing this job and that he wanted more out of life. So Pete tells him maybe he should take some night courses and the operator says he will. When Pete got to the laboratory, his two assistants, Johansson and Grendelwald, both came up to him saying they had solutions to the same problem. And so all three of them got together and began drawing up plans. He gets a call from his friend Nathan Lewis, who works as a biologist at the same institute, saying that he would like to meet him for lunch because he's just come across a problem and he would like his advice. They meet for lunch and Lewis tells Pete that he's been studying nerve cells, neurons, and that the electrical properties of the neurons have all changed. They have actually increased in, in speed and he asks what could be the problem and that's when Pete tells him of all of the different things that he have noticed today. Everybody coming up with new ideas. That's when Helga Arnoldson, who is the chief administrative assistant, joins them for lunch. She tells them that the supercomputer is having problems and that the physics equipment seems to be off just a little bit and that lots of people have suddenly come up with brand new projects all at once. That's when Pete comes up with the idea that maybe there was a general electrochemical change and he and Lewis got up and gathered a team together and began investigating it. By evening, they had confirmed that there was a general electromagnetic change, that insulators have become better conductors just slightly and that included computers and also cells like neurons and that the change had just begun. When Helga contacted Washington, she was told that other laboratories around the country had measured the same anomalies. We now shift to Archie Brock, who along with his co-worker Stan Wilmer were examining the chicken house where something had gotten in, killed some of the chickens and ran off with others. So they go off to do their work and Archie notices that the horses are acting a bit stubborn. That's when he noticed that some of the pigs seem to have gotten out. He sent Joe the dog after the pigs and Stan comes running over telling him that 
the pigs had gotten out of the cage by themselves. They had opened up the gate and gotten out, stood in their hind legs and unlatched it and got out. After Joe had rounded up a few of the pigs, Archie went back to the horses to continue his work, but the horses promptly broke the plow. That's when Archie realized that not only are the animals getting smarter, he's getting smarter also. Later that evening, Archie went to see Mr. Rossman, who owns the Rossman Institute, for advice. And Mr. Rossman gave him what advice he could, and Archie then asked to borrow some books to see if he could figure out how to read them. The next day, June 23rd, the New York Times had news about the phenomenon and what effect it was having around the world. The president said there was no danger in the brain speeding up and that the scientist was working on the problem and everybody should keep on working. The stock market began to fall and Chinese troops mutinied. And a new religion got formed in San Francisco called Baal. Pete had a meeting in his home with Felix Mendelbaum and Nathan Lewis. Also there was Sheila and Felix's wife Sarah. Helga was also there and they discussed that every thinking creature's IQ was rising and that not all people would be able to handle it. And because the chemical signals in the brain and the body was speeding up, people would be twitchy, nervous and have nightmares. Helga informed them that John Rossman went to Washington. Before he did, he told her to have everybody investigate the phenomena and keep their findings confidential. The change was speeding up and Helga informed them that some people have already begun to quit. The janitor and the elevator man quit and said that the work was too monotonous. Pete then said that the observations show that it is affecting the entire solar system and he believes that the solar system has just left some sort of force field that is causing this phenomenon. June 30th, the New York Times published its final issue stating that the change was decelerating and that it was apparently permanent. Several scientific discoveries were announced and the federal government had delegated power to the local authorities and that there were revolution in most of the Soviet countries, that the world economy was worsening and that the Baal religion had begun riots in Los Angeles. Back at the Rossman estate, Archie was now in charge. Apparently Stan was attacked by the pigs when he went to feed them. They had to take him to the hospital while the pigs escaped into the forest and three of the workers quit right after that along with Stan. Then Bill the foreman quit, grabbed his family, headed west. So Archie was left on the estate with just one other person, Voss, to help him. Archie was attacked when a big bull charged him. He managed to shoot the bull just before he passed out. When he came through, Voss quit and left. Back in New York City, a fourth of the residents had left. Only a few subway lines were running and the streets and the subways were dirty because only a few people were left who were cleaners. A lot of people had gone insane not being able to handle the change within themselves. The new elevator attendant at the Rossman Institute was a seven-year-old boy who was studying calculus. When Pete walked into the elevator, he asked Pete for more since he had finished the book he was reading and Pete referred him to a book on vector calculus. Language was changing as people who knew each other could say less but convey more information. Pete met with Lois and told him that Sheila was not taking the change very well. All the heads of the different departments at the institute met in a conference room with Mr. Rossman. They explained that they believed that the solar system entered the force field around the time of the Cretaceous period, which probably caused a big extinction at that time. And it has just now left that force field. They believe that the force field had the effect of inhibiting certain electromagnetic and electrochemical processes. Force field seems to emanate from the center of the galaxy and there seems to be only one such force field per galaxy. And since the Earth orbits the galaxy every 200 million years, they don't have to worry about going back into the force field anytime soon. Over in Africa, some tribesmen organized into an army and taught the apes to speak via 
some grunts and clicks and arm them and together they were going to begin to liberate themselves. Back in New York, finding out what was going on in the rest of the country and the rest of the world was difficult because only a few stations were working. Electricity was being conserved since only a few power stations were running, manned and guarded by volunteers. Felix was now basically running the New York City government. Pete met with Helga and told her that he got in touch with England via shortwave and that over there they were working on yeast to get food and that they were building food synthesis plants. He also got information from them and about the inhibitor field, how it was created. So he has his assistants, Johansson and Grunderwald, working on apparatus that could generate a similar field on a small scale. As she was taking him home, they were attacked by a mob that called themselves the people of Baal. And Pete was able to trick them into thinking that he and Helga was one of them and escape. Back at the estate where Archie has been educating Joe, he is running low on supplies. So he decides to head into town to see if he can pick up some supplies. It's been two months since the change and he wasn't eager to go and visit the rest of humanity. He remembers how he was treated when he was slow. Now he's probably a genius by pre-change standards. When he gets to town, he goes to the AMP. The man there told him that they don't do charity. They would find a place for him if he wanted or he can be by himself. So Archie chose to be by himself. The man also told him that there was a circus near town and that right around the time of the change, the animals escaped and that a tiger was hanging around town and got a couple of the children, but then it disappeared and they couldn't find it. When Archie got back to the farm, the pigs were there. They had gotten into the stored feed and were pulling it towards the forest. Two of the sheep were dead and the cows were gone. And when the big boar saw him, it charged the truck and the truck collided with it and went dead. Archie had forgotten his gun, so he stepped out and with a wrench faced the boar. And as the boar charged out of the forest, came an elephant with two chimpanzees. One of the chimpanzees had a gun with which it shot and killed the boar and the other pigs ran away. So Archie now had three new helpers on the farm. Meanwhile in Russia, Vladimir Ivanovich Panayushkin is the leader of the leader of the rebels and he uses a 14 year old telepath to see what the Russian military is doing and to get out of the way before the cruise missile descent hit. Back in New York City, where only about 7 million people were left, Felix Mandelbaum was using tricks and manipulation to ensure that those people were protected and got fed. Back at the Institute, they have succeeded in replicating the inhibitor field and Grunewald is not happy. He wants things to go back to the way they were before the change. Pete is going to work on the new fast and light spaceship project while Lois is moving on to the neurological cybernetic project. They had also proven that telepathy and extrasensory perception existed in some people and the violence seemed to be dying down in the city. Sheila on the other hand was still not doing well. In fact she was getting worse. The thoughts in her head seemed to be bouncing around and she couldn't get a handle on it and she was slowly going insane. In late September, Mandelbaum and Rossman are sitting and waiting for a nuclear attack from the Russians. The Russians are desperate because some Americans are helping the rebels and the government is about to lose. They've had their scientists working on four shields that they've placed around cities that they think will protect against the blast and radiation. The shields held. Later when Pete met with Helga, she told him that the spaceship when it's finished and it went on its test run would have two pilots. One was going to be Nate Lewis, an astrobiologist, and the second was going to be a physicist and they wanted it to be him. Meanwhile, back at the estate, Archie was getting along with the help of the two chimps, Maribel and Jimmy. Maribel handled feeding the animals while Jimmy handled the cooking and the housework. And now Archie had to do something he hated. He had to kill one of the sheep to provide food for everyone. Meanwhile, in a village in China, 
it was winter and there was snow on the ground and the ground was hard and frozen but the villagers would have to do the plowing themselves because all of the oxen and all the other animals had run away. Then an old prophet came into town leading two donkeys. He was wearing a very thin robe and he said he came to teach them how to control their bodies so they wouldn't feel cold, how to communicate with the animals and how to heal their wounds and be able to talk to each other without opening their mouths. It was late in the winter when the spaceship took off from Brookhaven National Laboratory. First they went to the moon, then they went to Venus, then they went to Mars, testing out the ship before they took it out further to test the edge of the inhibitor field. The solar system would take decades to explore and this was just the first test ship. It was filled with machinery for them to be able to test and measure everything that they could think of. Next up was to find the edge of the inhibitor field, take as much measurements on it as they can. After that, they were going to head to Alpha Centauri to see if there were planets there. As they approached the field, they sent out a missile with rats in it to measure the field, but they made a mistake. Apparently the field increased in strength quicker than they realized and before they knew it their ship was in the field and their intelligence dropped back to pre-change levels. The ship was now too complicated for them to operate. They would have to wait until the ship drove out of the field and they had no idea how long that was going to take. Back on earth Pete Lewis and their ship was two weeks overdue and in a house on Long Island Sheila was learning how to trick her psychiatrist into thinking she was getting better. Back in space, Lewis, Pete and their ship had finally cleared the field. Pete took some time to figure out where they were once his intelligence came back and they were about a month away from Earth. On their way back, they began to visit stars that were in their path and the first one they stopped at had a civilization with people that had green fur and six fingers. In all they would visit 19 planets, 14 of which would have intelligent life. And of the 14 they have found, only one had the ability to travel between the planets of their own star. They also came to the conclusion that because of the inhibitor field, the amount of intelligences that would achieve their level of intelligence would be very small. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Felix Mandelbaum was now the chief administrator for the entire New England area. It was spring and they had begun building weather turning four screens. A new language had also been developed. It used less words but had more precise meanings. Cities all over the world were dying and Mandelbaum had to find a way to facilitate people wanting to live in the country. The chief of the observers came to him and he noticed that there was scientific equipment from around the world that was disappearing and he wanted to investigate it and he needed more men. Sheila went into the city. The few cars she saw now no longer made noise. They now had a clean power source. The one flying machine she saw was silent and when she got into the building there was no fluorescent lights. The light seemed to come from where she didn't know. She went into the institute and ran into Grundeveld and when he saw how messed up she was he felt sorry for her and told her what he was doing. He was apparently building a space station that would have an inhibitor field generator in it and then they would put it in space and turn it on and send everyone on earth back to the way they were before the change. She told them goodbye and left. On her way out she stopped by Helga's office and with Helga she told Helga goodbye. Helga said that she should keep in touch because he may come back. She said no he's not coming back and she said she'll write or she'll give a message to a sensitive and she left. Sensitives are telepaths. She waited outside hidden in a doorway until she saw Helga leave and then Grunewald and Manzelli leave. Then she went back into the institute. She went back to the seventh floor which was now empty. She went to the shock machine. She strapped herself onto the table, put it between her teeth and turned it on and fried her brain. 
Lewis, Pete and the ship are finally headed back to Earth. At six hours out, they finally got in contact with Earth. Pete is worried about Sheila. That's the first person he asks for when the ship lands. Mandelbaum takes him to see her. He explains to him what she did and tells him that she's alive, but she's back to almost what she was before the change. The psychiatrist told him before he went in to see her that they were able to repair the damage, but she would be a normal pre-change human with an IQ of about 150. When Pete finally went in to see her, she told him that she's glad she did it. She feels at peace and that she knows that he's not Pete. Pete died in the change. On an island in the Pacific, Dr. Gronjewald, Dr. Menzeli, and a dozen other men from a dozen other countries came together. It was from that island that they planned to launch their satellite that was a inhibitor field generator that was planned to use to turn the clock back and send everyone back to the way they were before the change. Several men, including Manzelli, was going to go up with it so they would turn it on when it was up there, but they would die up there because they didn't have enough time to find a way to get them down. The men were so busy putting everything together that they did not see the ship that was in the air above them. That ship that was in the air destroyed everything that was on the ground, leaving the men unharmed. Then an anti-gravity raft came down from the hovering ship above and landed. It had several men on it and one woman. Granny Walt knew some of those people, Felix, Pete and Helga. Mendelbaum told them that the observers was watching them almost from the beginning. Mendelbaum told them that their insanity would be cured. After the men were taken away, Helga and Pete walked together on that beach there to help each other. Back up at the estate, Archie was now in charge of a colony of people that were of pre-change intelligence. Ten men and six women in that colony and two kids that have been born. So while he and Joe was out walking, Nate Lewis comes to visit him in an air car that has no doors and is silent. Nate tells him that they will be guiding a few people his way every once in a while and that in a few years the humans that have gone through the change will be leaving Earth to them and the animals. He also tells Archie that in a few days an old friend of theirs who had a very tragic history will be coming and those who know her want her to be happy. He then shook Archie's hand and hopped into his craft and just then he saw her coming up the driveway. He met her and she said her name was Sheila. He asked her where she's coming from. She said New York City and he introduced himself as Archie. And he welcomed her and they walked up the driveway to the house with Joe by their side. And that's how the book ends. Well, I want to thank you for watching and listening and I would like you to give this book a try. I think most of you will like it. Anyway, subscribe, hit the notification bell Give us a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.